Tiny Homes. Isa to sa nauusong style ng mga bahay ngayong panahon dahil paunti na ng paunti ang mga loteng pwede nating tayuan at parami na ng parami ang mga tao sa daigdig natin. Dahil dyan, pamahal na ng pamahal ang mga house and lots. So parang awa nyo na, tigilan nyo na yung panganganak. Bisitahin tayo ni Thanos dyan eh. Anyway, today ngayong araw ay sisilipin natin ang isang modern na tiny home upang tignan kung pwede nga ba itong gawin dito sa Pilipinas. Today we've traveled to the Blue Mountains to visit a tiny house built by a couple who thanks to some wonderful teamwork have created themselves an amazing home. Ooh, very nice. Maganda, maganda yung design style nila. Ooh. Nice. Pause muna natin dyan. So isa akong malaking fan nitong modern aesthetic na ginamit nila. Kung saan kinumbay nila itong wood design dito sa black na parang overall color ng bahay. So kung titignan natin ng malapitan, feeling ko yung materialis na ginamit nila para dito sa wall sa labas ay yung corrugated na metal sheets na tinatawag natin. And kadalasan, ginagamit natin ito sa Pilipinas. So merong advantages and disadvantages yung ganitong klaseng materialis. First advantage nito is mura yung ganitong klaseng materialis. Kasi very very common siya Madali siyang i-produce And madali kang makakabili ng ganito Sa kahit anong klaseng hardware store So hindi siya mahirap hanapin And then another advantage is Pag maraming aswang <laughs> Dun sa tinitiran nyo is Mahirapan silang pasukin yung bahay nyo Kasi malilito sila kung saan yung bubong So kala nila bubong pala yung pader Makonfuse sila Uwi na lang sila <laughs> Joke lang mo Hindi actually isa pang advantage ng corrugated metal sheets Ay hindi siya nagre-retain ng heat or hindi siya thermally retaining. Ibig sabihin na, halimbawa, ito yung ating corrugated GI sheet. Pag naarawan siya, ay mabilis ding aalis yung init niya pag gabi na. Yun nga lang yung disadvantage nun is pag naarawan siya dito, mabilis niyang madidissipate yung heat. So halimbawa, marus, ito yung corrugated GI sheet natin. And then, ito yung loob ng bahay. Tapos, may araw tayo dito. So pag natamaan siya ng araw dito at uminit siya, mabilis niyang madidissipate sa environment or mabilis niyang marirelease yung heat na naabsorb niya sa environment. Yun nga lang, ang disadvantage nun ay hindi lang sa labas niya marirelease yun, sa loob din ng bahay. So ang mangyayari, mabilis iinit sa loob ng bahay nyo. So hindi tulad ng mga CHB kung saan pag naarawan, hindi papasok sa bahay nyo yung heat. Yun nga lang, pag gabi na, dun i-release ng CHB yung heat pa loob sa bahay nyo. So yun yung pagkakaiba ng gantong klasing wall sa ginagamit nating mga CHB or hollow blocks na walls. So kung balak nyo gumamit ng ganitong klasing materialis para sa pader ng bahay nyo, maraming paraan para maiwasan nyo yung pag-init sa loob ng bahay nyo. At isa sa mga pinaka-common na paraan ay gamitan nyo siya ng insulation. So halimbawa, ito yung ating GI sheet. Ayan, ang ating corrugated GI sheet. And then, ang gagawin nyo ay lalapatan nyo dito ng insulating material. So marami tayong materialis na pwede gamitin para dito sa insulation nito. Meron tayong tinatawag nating expanding spray foam insulation kung saan sprayan nyo lang yan and then mag-expand siya, siya na mag insulate And then meron naman tayo yung polyurethane insulation panels para siyang malalaking piraso ng styrofoam pero gawa siya sa polyurethane and then tatapal nyo lang sa pader. And kadalasan mga ganito kakakapal yun. Pero yung pinakakomo na madalas kong nakikita ang materialis na ginagamit dito sa Pilipinas pang insulate ay yung tinatawag nating polyethylene foam insulation or PE foam insulation yung tawag doon. And siya yung nakikita nyo doon sa mga bubong kung saan parang merong aluminum foil tapos sa likod ng aluminum foil merong parang manipis na foam. So yun yung kadalasan ginagamit. And personally, pag gumagamit kami is around 5 to 10 millimeter thickness dapat. Pero the thicker, the better. That's what she said. <laughs> Kasi mas pipigilan niya yung heat na pagtagos papunta sa loob ng bahay niyo. So just in case ginawa niyo na ito my dudes and hindi pa kayo satisfied sa pag-insulate niya sa loob ng bahay niyo, medyo nainitan pa rin kayo. Ang pwede niyo gawin ay gumamit kayo ng mga indirect insulators. So halimbawa ito yung bahay niyo. Ayan, magtanim kayo dito ng mga bushes. May puno dito para yung araw hindi na directly tatama diyan. Ito na yung magi insulate sa araw. Or better yet, taniman niyo dito sa pader na to ng mga sayote vine. So, merong isang advantage yan aside from insulating properties. Ang mangyayari is kontra akyat bahay yan. So just in case aakyatin na yung bahay niyo, nung akyat bahay, makita niyo yung mga sayote, madidistract siya. Yun na lang yung kukunin niya tapos uwi na siya. Gawa na siya ng tinola niya. <laughs> Okay. Now this project was done as a DIY build, wasn't it? 
yeah majority wow, of DIY. it i did myself or with some help from friends and colleagues and stuff so yeah they did hate a lot of it but um, <laughs> you know in the end i think everyone's pretty proud of it and you have a background in construction don't you yeah i do um, run a bathroom and kitchen renovation oh, company and okay. so a lot of it was sort of ideas that i'd seen around or things that i'd really wanted to try out but i couldn't get anyone to go for so yeah i thought oh, i'll do it myself then <laughs> you know now, before we go inside, I want to talk about the contraption at the back of the house, which I noticed. <laughs> okay, so, isa pa lang napansin ko dito, my dudes, is, titignan natin yung bubong nila, is flat. So, hindi to gaano applicable dito sa Philippines dahil, as much as possible, dahil tropical country tayo, dapat malaki yung slope nyo. Para kung sakaling naipunan siya ng mga dahon, hindi niya mapigilan yung pagdaloy ng tubig doon. Unless, masipag kayo maglinis ng bubong, then bagay sa inyo yung flat roof. Pero, kailangan yung bubong natin merong at least 2% na slope para hindi magiipunan ng tubig and eventually maglilig. So, paano ba computein yung 2% na slope para dyan sa bubong, Lian? Ang ginagawa doon, 2% ibig sabihin every 100 centimeters na patakbong pa ganun, tataas kayo dito ng 2 centimeters. 2% na yung slope na yan. Hindi siya 2 degrees, my dudes. Ha? 2%. Iba yung 2 degrees sa 2%. Can we take a look inside the house and check out what you've done on the inside? Absolutely. Let's do it. All right. Thank you very much. After you. This is absolutely stunning. You really do notice the extra height in here, don't you? Like yeah, TV. you do. Yeah. The void definitely ah, adds. Oh, my skylight. Yeah. Very nice. Extra light and extra room. Maganda. Now, the design in here is really interesting and quite beautiful. Ooh. I really love it. Maaliwanas. <laughs> nice. Neon. This light feature at the top here is really special, isn't it? Yeah, it's fun. Nice. Yeah. It's a bit of rear, a couple of lights, fairy lights, and some plants. And I did get it up there by myself somehow, which was <laughs> a challenge, but yeah, it. I think it came up pretty well for a couple of Okay, so pause muna natin dito, my dude. So, usong-uso yung mga gantong klaseng decoration ngayon, which is para siyang rustic chic yung tawag nila dito sa mga parang kumuha ka lang nung fence tapos kinabit mo dun sa ceiling nyo. Pwede kayong bumili ng gantong materiales. Yung tawag natin dito ay welded wire mesh. So, may nabibiling mga ganyan. Yung sizes nila ay 4 by 8 feet. So, kasing size siya ng buong plywood. And then, pagdating naman dito sa mga light bulb na to, yung tawag sa ganitong klaseng light bulb, ay Edison light bulbs. Pinangalan siya after the American inventor Thomas Edison who was credited for the invention of the light bulb. So just in case gusto nyo bumili ng ganitong klaseng light bulb sa mga hardware or dun sa mga online shopping stores, Edison bulbs na lang yung type nyo and make sure my dudes na LED Edison light bulbs yung bibili nyo dahil magastos sa kuryente pag yung tungsten na ganitong klaseng light bulb yung bibili nyo or incandescent yung tawag nila dun. LED na lang para mas makatipid kayo, mas maliit yung water and yung electrical consumption niya. Anyway, tuloy na natin ang ating video. Yeah, it, I think it came up pretty well for a couple of old rusty sheets of steel left over. It certainly did. And now tell me about the lounge area that we're in right now. This is very spacious. Yeah, Ooh. one of the things that we just like Talagang to sort of lay on the couch and, and watch TV most, most evenings. So we definitely wanted mm. a full-sized couch, but we had to make it. Okay, so isa sa mga problema ang nakikita ko dito is parang masyadong malaki or parang masyadong malapit yung TV nila sa kanila. Bago kayo bumili ng TV, sukatin nyo yung distansya nyo magmula sa upuan nyo and kung saan nyo gusto ilagay yung TV and mag-refer kayo sa TV size chart na to. So ayan, sa size chart na yan, nakasulat yung laki ng TV na balak nyo bilhin and yung distansya kung saan hindi kayo may hilo or masi stiff neck sa paglingon-lingon sa TV nyo kasi pag masyadong malaki yun may nangyari dito tapos biglang may nangyari dun di nyo naman pwede paghiwalayin yung mata nyo ganun parang chameleon or chameleon Betty, I'm pretty sure it's pronounced chameleon may rapan kayo na tumingin tingin doon yung ngayon rason bakit ayokong umuupo sa pinakaharap na area sa mga sinehan kasi lingon ako dito tapos wala na na-exercise na yung leeg ko paglabas ko ng sinehan may abs na yung leeg ko so yun lang gagawin nyo may dudes is refer to this TV sizing and distance chart yeah absolutely Ooh. now can you walk me through the design and the features in this wow. kitchen yeah, so we have a full-size stove, we've got a full-size microwave and oven, and a fridge, obviously. Very and nice. then we've got our butler sink, we've got our pots Napaganda and pans in there, dishwasher. Nila. I don't necessarily know what's in that drawer, there's 
<laughs> There's glasses. Glasses. And tea towels in there and yeah. top of it. Okay, so napaghahalataan ko sino yung tagahugas. So kung sino yung memorize kung ano yung laman ng mga drawers and cabinetries. Siya yung tagahugas. So si Mr. Clean yung tagahugas. But ko ba? Laging meron akong character references. Pasensya na may lose kasi. Hindi ko alam yung pangalan ni Sir. Nainggit kasi ako sa balbas niya. Wala akong ganun. They ask you how you are. You just have to say that you're fine. And you're not really fine. But you just can't get into it. Anyway, tuloy. And I really like how you've managed to build a lot of the appliances into the stairs. Big brain. Yeah, we've noticed uh, quite a few tiny houses sort of in and around that have their storage in their stairs. And it was something that we thought would be good for maganda, us. Magandang, magandang solution yan. pantry in these sort of four drawers. And then we've got our extra stairs that do have more storage in them for knickknacks and bits oh. and pieces. And again, the lighting in this space is very well done. Yeah, thank you. We wanted a bit of oh. under-stair lighting. When you get up at 4 o'clock oh. in the morning, you do want to be able to get down the stairs. Maganda. So that's one. It also doesn't wake the person still in bed. Okay, pause muna natin dito. So, ang ganda nitong ilaw sa ilalim ng kanilang stair steps or stair nosing. Yung tawag natin dun sa parang pangpadapa. Yan ng mga katulad ko na dapaing bata. Yung stair nosing na nakalawit. So, nilagyan nila ng low level lighting kung saan, tulad nga ng sabi ni ma'am, pag meron pa natutulog sa kama and kailangan may kunin ka, yan lang ang i-on mo. Hindi mo na kailangan i-on yung main lighting kung saan pwedeng mabulabog yung natutulog. So, kung pupuslit ka ng midnight pizza snack, yan yung best friend mo yung mga ilaw na <laughs> And then, moving over here, what is going on oh. with these mirrors? There are wardrobes. Right. His and hers. So we've got lots of hanging storage. And then we've got a bunch of drawers, which open up all on soft closing. So you can oh, slam nice. them all as much as you like. Very and then nice. we've got a um, walk-in wardrobe line. Now that really okay, pause muna natin dyan. So, isa yung sign na mamahalin nitong bahay nila is yung gumamit sila ng soft closing na drawer slides and soft closing na cabinet door hinges. So, kung re-rewind natin dito, papansin ninyo, pag sinara niya itong drawer is, ayun o, bigla siyang titigil and then slowly na siyang sasara. So, kahit malakas mong isara yung drawer na yan, hindi siya basta-basta mababalibag na ganun. So, mahal yung mga gantong klase, mas mahal siya kaysa sa ordinary. Pero, sulit naman siya kung barumbado kayong tao. Also, kung titigil na natin dito nung kinlose nila yung door is hindi siya agad-agad nagko-close so ang soft closing na cabinet hinges pag kinlose nyo ganon tigil siya to certain point and slowly na siyang sasarang ganon so yun yung soft closing na cabinet door hinges or concealed cabinet door hinges yung ginamit nila dito specifically and now I have to ask you about the floors because this is really beautiful how you've done this transition Ooh. from the timber floors into the tiles this must have taken forever Yes, yeah, it did. It did. <laughs> nice. So first step was the tiler doing his bit, and he Maganda. basically tiled it Maganda flat and chiseled them off, the ones that I marked. And then the next step was the carpenter and, and I making up paper templates and jigsawing out the timber to fit. So I don't think he'd do it again in a hurry, but I'm happy with the way it worked out. I bet. Okay, was one of the things. So, um, papa, si niyo, itong sayig na to. Wala pa isip kayo. Sang kaya niya na kukuha yung mga ideas niya. Mas marami bang pumapasok na ideas dahil wala siyang book? Ah, no, no, no. Meron tayong app na just in case hindi kayo familiar dito, my dudes, is yung app na Pinterest. So, dyan din ako minsan kumukuha ng mga inspirations just in case meron akong gustong design sa mga kitchen. Dyan ako titingin ng mga inspirations kung saan pwede ko i-apply. And, one tip, my dudes, pag nagsisearch kayo ng mga pictures para sa bahay nyo, ang gagawin nyo ay... Halimbawa, meron na kayong picture ng kitchen, living room, dining room. Para hindi labo-labo itsura ng bahay nyo, ang gawin nyo is iprint nyo lahat ng mga ideas nyo. And, pagtabi-tabihin yung ganyan. Kitchen, living, dining, kwarto. And, dapat pag tinignan nyo yan, is hindi sasakit yung ulo nyo pag pinagtabi-tabi nyo yung mga picture na yon. So, isa yun sa mga teknik na ginagawa ko. Para kahit papano, iisa lang yung theme nila and hindi may hilo yung nakatira sa bahay. So, and then behind us is your oh. bathroom and wow yeah. this is very wow. impressive wow, talaga. wow it is definitely a feature of the house yeah something i definitely had to try and get right building bathrooms for a living so <laughs> yeah a few ideas in here i've always wanted to sort of try but the rake tour was a challenge and yeah i love a double shower just something I mind each day. Double yeah. shower. I never thought I would see a tiny house with a double shower. You're not the only one who said that. <laughs> Triple shower, even yeah. if you count the third one there. That is really impressive. Rich, no, rich people. A little bit bigger, but you've so, deep sila na contento sa double shower, triple shower for the win. 
And then you've got a flushing toilet in here. We have a flushing toilet, yes. Yeah, we used mm. the existing septic, so we didn't have to do a composting toilet, much to Lisa's disappointment because she really wanted one, but there was no way I was going to do that. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely a flushing toilet. Okay, <laughs> pause na natin. So, kung nalilito kayo, my dudes, kung ano nga ba yung sinasabi nilang flushing toilet and composting toilet, kadalasan kasi... Um, ginagamit nila sa mga tiny homes ay yung tinatawag nating composting toilet. So, ang pinaka-common dito sa Philippines yung ginagamit natin, flushing toilet, yun yung meron kayong ginagamit na tubig para ma-flush pa baba yung inyong mga biological wastes na lang yung itawag natin doon. Pero, meron yung nauso doon for some reason composting toilet kung saan meron tayong toilet dyan. And then, sa ilalim nun, doon may imbak yung mga you know, mga niluluwa ng ating kaluluwa. <laughs> na mga bagay-bagay na kinain natin kahapon o kagabi. So, yan. Ito yung sahig natin. And then, bababa dyan. Yan ang mangyayari. Merong mga materials dito kung saan makokompost dyan. And then, to put it simply, merong mga scientific chemical reactions na mangyayari kung saan makokompost ito. And pwede nyo nagamitin dun sa mga vegetable gardens nyo. Hindi ko lang bakit. Pero, yun yun. And, kadalasan, ang ginagamit na pang linis dito sa toilet bowl na to ay meron lang silang vinegar and water na isispray nila para just in case may naiwan na mga dirt dun sa edges ng toilet ay bababa and magkocompose para hindi mamatay yung bacteria. Kasi pag ginamitan nyo ng sabon dito, mamamatay yung bacteria dito sa compost pit na ito. And, hindi mo na magamit yung mga waste. Napaka-uncomfortable, my dudes. Pero I tried my best na just in case meron mang kumakain sa inyo, hindi kayo mawalan ng gana. So, ayan, my dudes. Composting toilet. So, kung gusto nyo matuto pa dito, ito may time picture dyan, post nyo na lang para makita nyo kung paano gumagana yung composting toilet. So yan, mas detailed explanation. I think having a walkway makes the second loft a lot more usable. Just having to get your mates to get up a ladder or maybe your mom or whatever. Some people probably wouldn't make it. So <laughs> yeah, I think overall it makes that a lot more usable space. Here as well. The okay, pause muna natin dyan. So, napakagandang idea nito na meron silang parang split loft type. So, ngayon lang ako nakakita ng ganito. Very good. Magandang solution yun. This is where you really notice the extra height. And it's not that much extra height, but it's enough to enable you to stand before you get into bed. And it really just makes this whole area feel so much more spacious. Yeah, it does. Matt and I aren't particularly tall, but being able to stand up was really important in our design. Rather than some lofts feeling like they're just an additional space, I think it really makes this feel like a second floor to the place, so yeah. Absolutely. I mean, I'm six foot four and I can almost stand up in here without touching my head. And in fact, uh, when I'm under the sky. Oh, so magka-height pala kami ni Sir, eh. Six foot four din ako, minus two feet. <laughs> this is perfect. No, that's right. <laughs> And now, can we talk about the budget, not including the land? What was the cost of realizing this home? That's a good question. I did not add up every sort of nickel and dime. There were a few favors and stuff in there, and a lot of it I did myself. So, yeah, I think it probably worked out around 80, 90,000 or something like that. I think 80,000. Okay, so 80 to 90 thousand dollars. So, tignan natin kung gaano kamahal itong bahay na ito. So, 90 thousand na lang. So, worst case scenario, 90 thousand. And convert natin. 90 thousand Australian dollars to PHP. Ano? Ha? Bakit ganun ang mahal ng kanilang bahay mo nun? So, 90,000 Australian dollars, mga 3.4. Sabihin na natin, 3.5 million pesos. Pag kinonvert natin, which um, medyo mahal. Kasi uh, kung titignan natin, yung size ng kanilang bahay kanina is 2.5 by 9 meters yung bahay nila. And sabihin natin, yung loft area, mag-add tayo ng mga natin. Times 2 na lang natin para safe. 45 square meters total floor area ng bahay nila. So kung i-divide natin yung 3.4 million by 45 square meters, 75,000 pesos per square meter which is nasa high end na yun dito sa Philippines and 
end. Yung ganitong klaseng budget makakagawa ka na ng around 200 square meter na bahay na. Up and down pa yon, Two stories yon, ma dude. So, parang medyo mahal and kaya natin gumawa ng ganitong klaseng bahay ng mas mura dito sa Philippines kasi feeling ko yung mga materials na ginamit nila dito is mga high-end materials and baka mahal din yung construction materials doon. So, isa pang bagay na napansin ko dito sa kanilang bahay, ma dudes, ay parang wala silang laundry area kung saan doon yung washing machine. So, hindi ko alam kung meron bang ilog sa tabi nila or nagpapalabas sila sa nanay nila. Pero, yun, isa ring issue yun dito. And with that, I guess, dito na natin tatapusin itong video na ito kung saan ni-review natin itong tiny house. So, kung gusto nyo mapanood itong video na ito, lalagay ko yung link down in the description below. And also, salamat sa Foxy Clothing para sa damit nating suot ngayon. So, napakaganda ng kanilang t-shirt. Very Japanese to desune. <laughs> Anyway, huwag nyo kalimutan mag-like, subscribe, and hit nyo yung notification bell kung ayaw nyo aswangin yung mga pader nyo. Hanggang sa susunod na kabanata, mga bata, a flying face!